Welcome back to another episode of This Old Shop. I'm your host, Bruce Stomper, and in this episode, we're gonna try and not botch a paint job. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, don't mind if I do. Heat engaged. I'll tell you, this must be what the pioneers felt like the first time they could turn on a light switch or have a crap indoors. This is modern times. We're gonna fire up the sprayer, prime, maybe even texture. I'm feeling optimistic. We're just gonna quickly go over the highly technical procedure for mixing up the bucket of paint. You gotta put a lot of faith in the lid. Where you lack skill, you make up with hope. Almost as exciting as getting the shop painted. I'm very excited that I'm gonna end up with a very nice clean five gallon bucket. I'll tell you, something about containers and having containers to put things in, Makes you warm feeling. Well, it's a far cry better than what we discovered last time we tried this. It's just water-based um, latex primer. So just to recap, the ceiling, oriented strand board. So if you use a latex primer, water-based primer on oriented strand board, the wood will absorb the moisture and it might cause the flakes to lift a little bit more. So again, put no stock in this advice. This is just going based on what I've seen. Uh, I did a shop a few years back, they painted the inside. It's echo in here and there's nothing I can do about it, by the way. They painted the OSB, but when I put the sheets up, they got me to put it shiny side out. So one side of the OSB is kind of furry and it's got lines on it, like that up there. And the other side, it's kind of hard and, and it's got a sheen on it from the press procedure at the factory. I put the shiny side out and they painted it with a latex primer, uh, with a latex primer and paint, and, uh, and had no issue. So I don't know what there is to that rhyme or reason, but uh, we did our ceiling with an oil-based primer, and uh, then the walls is just gonna be the, uh, the latex water-based primer because it is substantially less expensive, with the exception of those, those two panels up there which uh, well, I just kind of forgot about. So they got done yesterday uh, to close that spot up. I'm gonna paint and texture over them, but ideally, I'm not gonna give any secrets. Can you guys guess what a guy might put up there in that space, front and center, right above the door, in the grand open bay after we have our nice timber framed post and beam mezzanine? What would you put up there? Leave it in the comments. If you're uh, getting supplies and grabbing stir sticks, especially if they're free, uh, grab a whole handful. They don't mind giving them away. They make excellent shims. I keep some of them just kicking around. Uh, they're handy for just whatever because it's just a nice straight piece of milled wood. Uh, if you're buying at a wholesaler that you got to frequent all the time though, won't be stealing a bunch of stir sticks. I'm not actually using the stir stick to stir. I like to check because uh, we're gonna skip a step, and I might come to regret it, but you know me, full transparency, if it's a screw up, I'll, I'll include it on the camera. Uh, we're not gonna strain this bucket, because I don't wanna dirty another bucket, and uh, well, I'm not gonna explain myself any further than that. I'm just scraping the bottom and the sides to make sure that we're not faced with a big old stringy mess of crap, because sometimes if it's an old bucket of paint or it's been sitting around a long time, which I wouldn't suspect it would have been. That's why I buy it from a wholesaler that has decent turnover. But if you bought it from Mom and Pa's local hardware shop, they might have had this five gallon bucket of primer forever. And uh, things get a bit of a skin on them. So. The, the pickup tube has got a strainer on it as well. So we're gonna do this though, like this. Drain the bucket. Like so. Don't, I don't, well, again. See, you guys gotta be careful, eh? You go, Spruce Stomper, you don't know what you're talking about. You're correct, I don't, but we just used this not that long ago, and uh, I know that you don't wanna put this return line in the bucket of material right off the bat, because to know that it's primed properly, you gotta wanna see it come out of the end of this hose. And if it's already covered in goop, then you're covered in goop. So, we're plugged in, no we're not. Oh, we're plugged in and turned on. You gotta turn that to prime. 
Learned that the hard way last time too. It takes a long time to prime the line if you don't turn it to prime. Now, reason number two is you don't want this prime or this return line in your bucket when you prime is that this was rinsed out with whatever. I think the last time it was oil-based, so it was like, uh, some, I don't know, paint thinner or mineral spirits or something. Uh, you're gonna pump that right into your bucket of brand new paint and uh, it's not very conducive. So we get the first bit of gloves out here. And that to me looks like paint if I ever seen it. And then without dripping, that can go right back in there. Flip that over to spray. Last thing to do is to purge the wand. Oh, <laughs> that bucket's got insulation in it. Hey, we're making a real concoction here. Oh, what a putz, eh? Don't do it right beside the bucket of brand new paint. You see why you gotta purge it real good? That line, I think it's, this is a 50 foot line or something, holds a lot of liquid. And that, my friends, is all mineral spirits, which doesn't play nice with latex based paint. We're locked and loaded. I gotta put on a cuter outfit and uh, we'll get chopping. Oh, regretting turning up that heat a little bit. It's catch 22. You need the heat to dry the paint until you put on this sandwich bag. Well, latex paint is water based, um, but they still recommend that you don't eat it. So I'm gonna wear a respirator, which will limit our chit chattiness. I don't have a great system devised yet. I got a few scaffold options. One, two, ladder, stand on my head. We'll figure something out. But uh, we're gonna spray and back roll. <sighs> Much debate about the back roll because it takes time and time is not always a commodity you have in excessive amounts. But the back rolling, um, one, you know, it'll eliminate any sorts of runs or smears or screw ups. It helps with that. But from my reading, my understanding is that when you just spray with an airless sprayer, that it doesn't promote exceptional adhesion on the first coat. Uh, you're gonna have pores or holes or gaps or cracks or any, any minute that you cannot see very well. I can't see very well at the most of times that the back roll forces the paint into the drywall and uh, really helps with coverage. And when, I'll tell you, when we did the ceiling, I back rolled the entire ceiling with the OSB, which, I mean, she don't get much rougher than that, as my old boss would say, rougher than a badger's ass. Now, if you're working with scaffolding or any sort of uh, you know, off the ground equipment, best to have it in its maximum height capacity right at the tippy top. And uh, that's where it's most precarious. And the trickier things are to stand on, the more alert you'll be. It really keeps you on your toes, so. This is where we might come to a regret not straining the bucket of paint first. Uh, it's freaking already dry for me. Well, is that already dry? Turn it back down to 55 because up top where the heat's gathering, and I'll address this real quickly. You go, well, that heater's too high off the ground. That's not very efficient. Well, yeah, there's going to be an eight foot floor underneath of it, so the heater is only going to be six feet off the floor. Well, it's time you're done. That's why it's hanging from the ceiling at the moment, but it traps a lot of hot air rises. So you trap a lot of heat up there. But what we got rigged and wired right there by that, right there by that yellow cord in the center, we've made provisions for a big old ceiling fan. Um, okay, we're gonna put a lunker up there and it's gonna drive all that hot air back down and help with some air circulation. So that's that if you were curious, but
Well, we find ourselves in the age-old painting predicament. We're halfway done, but we're more than halfway through the paint we have. So, we're gonna do the risky biscuit move here and uh, dig into some crap we had in the basement. Now there's a big difference between being a little bit risky and 100% irresponsible. Just because we're using paint from the basement doesn't mean we're just gonna try and pump a straighten again. This is paint and primer in one. It's not gonna care. Cue the comment section. I made a YouTube short on this uh, food cover. It's a picnic cover basket wire mesh thing. Oh, you can buy those pre-made at the paint store, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, dude. Works good. Wash it, reuse it. You know, it takes a lot of pressure off a guy if you just go, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure, but this, to the best of my knowledge, is what we should be doing. Doesn't that look good? And it makes the space, like, look at it. Huh? Huh? It's going pretty good. I have had the, the tip plugged twice. Uh, easy fixes though. Uh, it's got a real fine wire that you can just clean the tip out, give it a rinse, and it's good to go. Not good. We're back. Pretty well got our beat. Just gotta do, just gotta do that little bit above the door and there will be no more. Inexpensive, but always reliable. Wagner Power Tax. Ooh. Spray, and in no particular order, we're doing the ceiling, the walls, we're doing it all in what we're gonna call a very tasteful orange peel. <laughs> oh, and in case it's bothering anyone, uh, I did finish the cleanup. <laughs> Gotta love this directions here. Uh, so it gives you a little direction on the consistency as to which you'd want to mix your mud to. You know, you got to get it right so it gets the right effect. So we have here, very technical, orange peel, coarse, pancake batter. All right, pancake batter. What if you're shit at making pancakes though? I think that's about exactly what we're looking to see. That's a pretty light orange peel. If we don't hang out in one spot for too long. And I just wanted a little bit of depth in the space. Like you see this, it just looks like this giant smooth whitewash deal. Uh, I'm not keen on that. And if you'll recall, we only did two coats of drywall. So we did a tape coat and then a second coat and ideally, if you were gonna do this was finished, right? You'd have a third finished coat of drywall mud on it. But uh, we didn't do that because we're gonna texture. And then I actually wavered on that because we were trying to beat the weather. And I was like, oh, we're not gonna texture, it's good enough. And then we hit the road bump with uh, us receiving the wrong paint. If you don't know what I'm talking about, well, you gotta hustle back through the channel and just watch all the videos. But here we are, doing things proper, two coats primed, I'm glad we didn't compromise. All right, we're ready to go onto the ceiling. Got another batch of mud mixed up, and this is, it's a little thicker. It's actually a lot closer to pancake batter. <laughs> if, that, if that pancake batter was, Made while you were out camping after you've had a few drinks, maybe it's a little thick, but I changed the nozzle on the gun to the yellow tip. The only difference on this, the size of the tip, uh, the different colors is a different diameter of hole. So the bigger the hole, the less concentrated the mud's gonna be when it's coming out. So you get a thicker pattern. 
Um, that's about as technical as that gun gets. Uh, that, that bumblebee looking butt on the end of it, all that's in there is a fan. That's the uh, really nothing more technical than that. Gravity feeds out of the hopper into the chamber and uh, then the wind takes her out. So home stretch. It's hard to tell on the ceiling because of the OSB already, but once it's painted, I think it'll, it'll be well worth the effort. Ceilings kind of suck. This one does anyways. <laughs> it's almost 17 feet off the ground. Ladder trip, ladder trip, ladder trip. Spruce Stomper, why don't you just use the scaffold, buddy? You cover more ground. Well, if I use the scaffold, then I'd have to wash the scaffold even more so than I already do, so hard pass. I gotta go from there to there. Four foot strip. Nothing comes cheap, you know? If it ain't uh, a dollar value, it's sweat equity. Isn't that what they call that? Buzzword, sweat equity. Uh, all these things ruined by HGTV, which probably isn't a thing anymore. Does anybody even watch TV anymore? And I got on the walls. Thus concludes step two of a three-part procedure. For this part of the project, step one, prime. Step two, texture. Step three, Ta-da! Paint. I'm gonna be real pleased with it. Real happy. I saved you the trouble of cleaning up. I didn't want to put that burden on you. We've patched up the masking in a few spots. And if anybody remembers what the color of paint is, plaster is just different enough from the color white so we'll be able to tell that it's actually going on. You know, it's kind of gray, actually. I like it. Can you tell? I can tell. I think plaster is code for gray-ish. It's more fun pretending to be a carpenter than it is pretending to be a painter. Actually, I was thinking. Oh, get under the eave here. It is moist in there. Holy, there's so much moisture. It's so humid outside. Like, it's raining. It's killer in there. But one coat done. One coat. Well, nothing left to do but the cleanup. <laughs> See, this is how you know it's warm in the shop. I'm all frogged up. I want to officially invite you in to the freshly painted and cleaned up Spruce Stomper headquarters.
Now the gorgeous part of camera is that it all just looks like one big blank slate of the same color, but I'll tell you, it looks sassy. Oh, I thought there was a, I thought there was a, a, a stain. Nope, just a bug. Again, I saved you the trouble of cleaning up. I'm starting to think this is a one-way relationship. Every time it comes to cleanup time, you guys disappear. It wasn't that much fun. I had to wash down the scaffold, wipe it down while the paint uh, was still in condition enough to be, to be wetted down. We've got uh, all our masking and stuff cleaned up and well, when uh, life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. It was pouring rain again, so anything that could get wet, I just left out in the rain and uh, it's self-washed, you know? Mother Nature's dishwasher. Well, and with that being said, I appreciate you guys watching. I had a good time. Super happy that the space is getting closer to usable. So, as always, we will see you on the next randomly scheduled adventure. Take care.